In this lesson, we are going to talk about the model analysis. All structure behaves dynamically when subjected to load or displacement. If the load applied very slowly, the acceleration value will be small and can be neglected, and the static load analysis can be justified. The acceleration of earthquakes cannot be neglected, hence the additional inertial force cannot be neglected too. The conclusion is, I recommend you to make a dynamic analysis for all buildings, not only for the building which is mentioned in the codes, because it is very easy to make dynamic analysis as we will see in the next lessons. The first step in dynamic analysis is the model analysis. The model analysis is a powerful technique for understanding the structural behavior to validate simulation result. And model analysis is the step one for response spectrum analysis and time history analysis. So here in our model, suppose that we have 2500 of joints. Let's assume that each point has two degree of freedoms. So from this model, we can generate 5000 model cases. So, when the seismic acceleration is applied to each joint of the model with respect to single degree of freedom, different mode cases with unique model response are obtained, from mode 1 to n number of modes. So, the response spectrum analysis will combine all these mode cases to obtain a single response for the structure. So, we need to define the model cases in ETAPS. To do that, go to the Define menu, then click on Model Cases. Here, as you can see, we have a previous model case, so I am going to modify it by clicking Modify Case. Here we have two types, I recommend you to use rates. Here is the B delta, which we have defined before. Now, in the load applied for, as the LC quick doesn't cause a direct force on the building, it causes acceleration. So I'm going to add three loads, and I will change their type to acceleration. Then choose UX, UY, UZ. For the target ratio, we need at least 90% of model participating mass ratio. So change all of this value to 90%. Now, for maximum numbers of modes, I recommended you to take it two times of the number of the stories. However, I am going to take it seven to show you the difference. Now, let's analyze the model. The analysis of the model is completed, and after the analysis, we need to check that whether the number of modes which we considered is sufficient or not. And according to the codes, the model participating mass ratio should be at least 90% of the actual masses along both directions. In our case, we have considered seven numbers of modes. So to find out whether it's sufficient or not, Go to the result branch, then model result, then click on model participating mass ratio. As a result of that, a new table has opened up and showing the model participating mass ratio. Now go to the last model to see if the sum reaches the 90 percent. So along the x and the y direction, the sum of the seven modes is 84 percent so we have to increase the number of modes so to do that let's unlock the model now go to the define menu then select model cases here click modify under the maximum number of modes take it to multiply by 90 now, let's analyze the model again. The analysis of the model is completed. So, go to the model participating mass ratio again. Now, 
Now go to the last model. As you can see, the model mass sum has reached more than 90% along all directions, which means that the 48 numbers of modes is adequate for considering the dynamic analysis. Also, if you want to see the model shapes, click F7 from your keywords. Now in this form, click on mode option, then select the first mode, then click upload. Now click on start animation bot. As a result of that, you can see the first mode shape. By this way, if you want, you can see any mode you want by changing the mode number. Now it is the end of our lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to learn how to define the response spectrum.